mug with a pile of rat men, and we're going to just build them up, and I'm going to ramble a little bit. We're going to talk. We're going to have a good time. It's Saturday in the afternoon. Hope you're all doing well. Let me know what you're working on, and uh, let's get started. These are from the Island of Blood set. We've got 20 clan rats, or you can use them as slaves. The great thing about this set is that you've got a bunch of different sculpts. You've got some in these little rags and looking very, very worse for wear. And then you've got some that are actually wearing straps or strips of armor. They've got like little plates and their clothes could appear to be more like they're clan rats, like they're better equipped. So you've got different kinds of Skaven. That's what I loved about this set. Man, that Island of Blood set was so good. The Skaven, the uh, quality of the High Elves, you've got the Sword Masters and the High Elf Calvary, the Lord on the Griffin. So many great things in this kit. This is what I'm talking about, you guys. This is the old school goodness coming from Games Workshop. Something I saw on this one too when I was building him up. Was it this guy? Or I had one Skaven I built up with a, uh, here, this guy. I was going to get ready to start painting him. I actually primed him, but I can include him. He's got a little rat down there hanging out. So cool. Man, the Skaven range, really great. Okay, so we're going to we're gonna build, we're going to talk. I just came back from the hobby store where I talked to my local manager of the uh, local game shop, and he told me what is going on from what he was able to learn by talking to his distributor. And it's very interesting. This is a, this is not a games workshop store. This is a hobby store. So he sells a number of different ranges and different games. And uh, this is what he learned about not only Warhammer Quest Cursed City, but all of the delays, the issues going through, uh, going, going on at the company now. So because of Brexit, the uh, products coming into the UK are being taxed very heavily. Hill of plastic. It's the best kind of plastic. That's right, Brady. The um, So the materials coming from China into the UK are being taxed. So it, the plastic for like any flying creatures, the pegs, everything that they're bringing into the UK comes from China. And so even though they make it, in the UK, the fact that Games Workshop, and, and not just Games Workshop, this is the thing, all of the, uh, every every company, every, every company that makes and manufactures anything in the UK shipping in from China have to pay this tax. And the tax is that 70% of was it 70% like 70% of what they make or what they what they create has to be done in the UK and the, and the, like the taxes are so high that it makes sustaining any kind of 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 business where you're manufacturing and you're bringing the materials in from another country just not feasible so that's why even though games workshop makes their games they make their products they make their models they're shipping in these very cheap, low cost materials from China. And before it was so that they could get the best deal possible. They could really make back their investment by marking up the items and uh, selling them. So <laughs> Games Workshop moves to Canada. So that's what, so my, my local gaming store manager has said that the the issue now is that Games Workshop needs to find another distributor of the materials. They can't rely on China anymore because of this crazy tax. They need to go somewhere. Is this part of the rat's ear? Uh, the fact that they're having to go out of the country has been really hitting them. Now they rely on India. Uh, you know, I haven't heard that, Brady, but... Um, I have heard my, my gaming manager said it's not just Games Workshop, but like all these smaller companies, these smaller games companies that were starting up and trying to make a go of it uh, in the UK are now, they're going to be hit even harder because Games Workshop is such a flagship company. And the fact that this is hitting everybody, Brexit is hitting everybody, it's going to be harder for them to compete. And that's a bummer, man. 
it's such a bummer because you've got all these creative IPs and creative companies with big steps for their 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 uh, games. They want to take a chance. They want to take a risk, and because of three D printing, they want to they want to make something. They're moving to Canada. Also, Warbox keeps making videos. Bro, much love. All right, thanks, Bungie. Oh, it was a joke. Yeah. See, that, that's the thing. They can't keep doing it. They can't keep importing their materials from China. They have to bring the materials in from somewhere else now. But it's not just the plastics. My uh, my contact said that his, his source told him that it's not just the these. It's everything. So, like, from the materials that they use to print these, uh, that, like, the... Uh, the inserts, the cardstock that they make for like the um, uh, the boards sections. How to solve this? Wait till the twenty twenty four election. <laughs> yeah, I, the the thing is, he's so I asked him, what's the best way? What's the what's the fastest way for Games Workshop to get back on track? And he said he doesn't know, and and that's what they've been trying to figure out. But he said, if you've noticed, Games Workshop has basically pulled anything, any references to uh, Warhammer Curse City. He said that's why you don't see anything about uh, big upcoming releases. That's why the Warhammer community had an article the other day, earlier this week, that they're not going to be doing pre-orders. They're not going to be taking pre-orders for a little while because um, of the, I don't want to say the word just in case they're still bad, but that that un, that very bad thing that's going around and uh, also Brexit. So a combination, it's like a perfect storm of all these terrible things that are happening. But then I asked them, well, how does that affect the uh, upcoming releases that they've been teasing? Like the, the Squigs guys, the Squig Riders in 40K, the Soul Blight Grave Lords. He said, everything that they've already produced has to get put out and released. But things that are on a pre-order, things that are not yet out and available, he said. Games Workshop has ordered so much to uh, enough to do like a first run of of products, and so that's why you don't see requests now. See, once they're all gone, they're not doing a second run. That's what he said. They're pretty much going to wait. Oh, is this the leader's sword? I think this is the leader's. The champion sword he's pointing forward so that's really rubbish i think that's terrible because you had the soul blight grave lords that they were teasing and uh those i don't think have gone into production yet because i asked him about that i asked him about these uh, uh the, the the squig riders the 40k uh orc squig riders and he said yeah they're not they're basically not going to come out everything is going to be put on hold Nothing is going to come out because there is there is the whole issue of the materials distribution. Where does that leave us? I mean, that for me as a content creator on YouTube that wants to make content that my viewers will appreciate, will want to watch, that means that everything that we were getting hyped for, like the, the new Lord Croak. Oh, that's another thing he mentioned. If you notice Bellacor, I don't know how many of you have gone into your local game store to try and pick up or even look at the new Bellacor model. But he said that Bellacor, every game store was only allowed two Bellacor models. How is that? Isn't that insane? Two models that are going to sit on their shelves probably for like an hour after the store opens. And then you've got your, your demon players that, are gonna, that have been like getting hyped off of the Warhammer community articles. They're going to be rushing in. If they haven't pre-ordered already, they're going to see it and immediately snap it up. That's why uh, Crimson Court, my contact said he had a couple of boxes of Crimson Court come in for Warhammer Underworlds, but they were almost immediately sold out and he said they're not getting any more. And again, this could all be, this could all be conjecture, right? I mean, I take everything I hear with a grain of salt because it's not the official word from the company. And the fact that all of these issues are happening, he said is because, and I, I kind of trust him on this, they don't want to mention it and they're not, they don't want to make an article full on saying, hey guys, this is the deal. 
we're probably not going to be releasing anything big for the next nine months. I mean, can you imagine telling your stockholders that? The game store near me, but two is some, <laughs> I would love some Crimson Court as a vampire lover. That's the thing. Games Workshop knew Crimson Court was coming out. Warhammer Quest is coming out. And they knew it would sell like hotcakes. And they knew, oh, shoot, we're only going to get enough materials to make one run. What do we do? They released a tweet that said, uh, responding to somebody else, it wasn't even an official announcement. They released a tweet saying that it was going to be a limited run. They weren't going to do another one or they're going to have to find a new way to repackage and repurpose it. The good thing is Games Workshop has the rights. They have the designs. It's not how off Games Workshop is. Yes, Bungie, that is strange. I think that is a pers- that's an optics thing. They don't want potential investors or they don't want their board to see that their public perception is getting blown up and set on fire because they're not releasing these statements, right? They're not coming out and saying, hey, guys, because of shipping and everything that's going on and Brexit, we're not able to meet the demand of our customer base. Things are going to be kind of weird for the next foreseeable future, like nine months. My, my guy said nine months to a year things could be backed up. And he said, they're not taking pre-orders anymore. And basically they have a first run of things coming out from, from uh, because of the, the materials that they're ordering from China, things, everything they're releasing that has already been slated to be released is gonna come out no matter what. They're taking the hit on that, but they're not going back and they're not ordering more because everything they order is gonna have this 70% tax uh, tariff slapped onto it. And that just is crazy because there's no way for them to succeed as a business like that. That business model is not going to work, which is why they're kind of putting a hold on everything and they're going to recalibrate. They're trying to think of how they can best move forward as a company. And who suffered from that? The fans, us, the people that want, that were getting hyped over that uh, Warhammer reveal video of the Soulblight Gravelords that wanted to order a Warhammer Quest City uh, Cursed City, maybe we didn't get into the first, uh, maybe we didn't pre-order it when we first had the chance. But after seeing so many videos, Games Workshop posted all these tutorials, painting guides, and now you see all these people with it. Then the British MI6 shows up because he shared the news. No, the, oh no, I'm broadcasting from a secure location. Please don't come get me. The thing is, I want to keep, I've got, look, I've had this bag of Skaven in my, in my, drawer uh, in my in, in the vault for for years and I've never built them up and when I was thinking I want to do a live stream but I don't know if I want to keep building new Warhammer quest models I turned to my closet of potential and I said you know I never really got to painting these skaven maybe I'll take a break from doing the Warhammer quest stuff and I'll film how to paint guides for the different clans like clan Eshin, clan Mulder, clan Spryer. And I think that is the way we're going to have to move forward for the first What's up with this base? I'm still here. I'm still going to make videos. And in the foreseeable future, we'll just take everything as it comes. I've got a huge backlog. I'm, a, I'm pretty sure 90% of you guys out there have a huge backlog, just like I do. We're going to keep painting what we got. And if Games Workshop is letting us down, And it's not their fault too, you know, they're not in charge of Brexit and they have no say about taxes and tariffs that the country is putting on them. It's a bummer that it affects everybody, small companies to large companies like Games Workshop. We're gonna have to make do. And the the hobby is still fantastic. We're still really enjoying painting. We're not gonna be amped up. I think the Games Workshop methodology is get people amped up on upcoming releases, things that are coming down the way get them so pumped up and so hyped up that they want to buy it as soon as it comes out on pre-order. And then when that releases, get them hyped up about the next thing. Games Workshop, I think, is going to need to start focusing on how do we paint up and work on the things that we have, our collections that we have right now. What are we going to do to make people excited about dusting off those miniatures and finding better ways to play? Maybe they'll do more tactics and more gameplay videos. Maybe they'll do more painting guides to um, reinforce the excitement that they built up in the first place on these models. Like once the Slanesh came out, remember when the Slanesh release came out, Jam Jar, a bunch of people were so 
pumped up to get those models. And once they released them, and the Games Workshop was like, okay, now let's move on to the next one. Look at all this Lumineth Realm Lords now. And what happens to the people like us that go out and we drop two, three, four hundred dollars on those models? There's no follow up videos from Games Workshop saying, hey, how do you like your Slanesh uh, Hedonites? Have you painted them yet? And have you thought about getting them if you were tempted, but you haven't yet? Here are some uh, alternative color schemes to go with. Here's some more fiction. Join the Skaven protest. There's ways I think that Games Workshop is going to creatively reinvest people in the hobby. But see, I'm, I'm not even going to be able to get through all of these. Uh, I, I'm going to wrap it up here and uh, we'll keep working. For some reason, this guy's you're messing with me, Skaven bell guy, bell ringer. All right. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. I'm sorry today was a little bit of ramble. This live stream was a little bit of rant that uh, that's the way things are. And the thing that bumps, that grinds my gear is that I had to learn about this from, I will enjoy the rest of you. Thanks, Bungie. You too. Everybody, let's have a great day. It's the weekend. You know, it's Saturday. I hope you all have a great day out there. The thing that really makes me upset is that Games Workshop, from the beginning, as soon as they knew they were going to have this problem, they didn't come out and say to their fans, to the people that are spending money, to their uh, to their fan base, that we have this potential problem on the horizon. We're going to look at ways of solving it. And we just want you to know that we appreciate you and we uh, we love you guys as our fans. If they had done that, then I would be like, OK, OK, it looks like we're going to go through some rough, bumpy waters. but you know, we love the company. We love their products. We love what they're offering. And uh, that's all they needed to do. All they needed to do was say that uh, they, there's this concern coming down the road and they're, everybody needs to batten down the hatches. Even if it meant that their stock would take a hit, even if it meant that their shareholders might start to panic, I think the feeling of trust between Games Workshop and their customer base would not be as shaken. And hey, doing videos like this might be why I don't get sponsored from Games Workshop. That's Addressing, realizing that Games Workshop isn't doing it. I, uh, I wanna say for the two of you still watching, having to work a full-time job with a family, but also enjoy my hobby and wanting to do YouTube videos. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me every video. I appreciate every comment. I appreciate every every like. You guys make it so worthwhile. You make me excited to come and sit down and think of new videos that I can make and new content that I can produce. So thank you guys. I appreciate you. If you want to uh, support me, you can just give this comment a thumbs up. Write a comment down below. Help me spread through the YouTube algorithm. And uh, join the Discord if you're not already. We've got a lot of great people there all the time. And uh, we're all looking forward to the next War Boss Tape Painting Challenge. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day. It's still Saturday uh, where I am. We're going to probably go out and maybe get a good burger to eat. <laughs> and uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you later. Latest players.